Good morning, family, and welcome to Epiphany Fellowship. We are so excited that you all decided to be with us today. Well, it's preaching time. So if you have your copy of God's Word, open your Bible to the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 4, Joshua, chapter 4. Now, we're going to jump around just a little bit, uh, but stay with me. We're going to read the whole uh, book uh, or chapter, uh, chapter 4, starting at verse 1. We're going to make our way down. Joshua chapter 4 reads like this in the CSB. After the entire nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord spoke to Joshua, choose 12 men from the people, one man for each tribe, and command them, take 12 stones from this place in the middle of the Jordan where the priests are standing. Carry them with you and set them down at the place where you spend the night. So Joshua summoned the 12 men he had selected from the Israelites, one man for each tribe, and said to them, go across to the ark of the Lord, your God, in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you lift a stone unto his shoulder, one for each Israelite tribe. Skip down to verse 8. It says that the Israelites did just as Joshua had commanded them. The 12 men took the stones from the middle of the Jordan, one for each of the Israelite tribes, just as the Lord had told Joshua. They carried them to the camp and set them down there. Joshua also set up 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant, were standing. The stones are still there today. Verse 10, the priests carrying the Ark continued standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything was completed that God had commanded Joshua to tell the people in keeping with all that Moses had commanded Joshua. The people hurried across. We're going to jump again. Jump to verse 14. On the day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they revered him throughout his life as they had revered Moses. We're going to skip one more time. This is the last time, I promise. Verse 19. The people came up from the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and camped in Gilgah on the, west, on the eastern limits of of Jericho. Then Joshua set up in Gilgah the 12 stones they had taken from the Jordan. And he said to the Israelites, in the future, when your children ask their fathers, what is the meaning of these stones? This is what this is very important. You should tell your children, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you crossed over, just as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we crossed over. Last verse, and I promise you I'm done reading this text. Verse 24, this is so that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord's hand is strong and so that you may also or, and always fear the Lord your God. We're continuing in our undefeated series, and I just want to tag this text in our exchange. A letter from my children. A letter from my children. Let's pray and ask God for his blessings. Father, we thank you and we praise you for yet another day of life, health, and strength. Thank you that you indeed are with us in everything. And so because I know that you're with us in everything, I'm asking you, Lord, to show up now. Give me preaching power to tell the truth with boldness and clarity and conviction. Lord, I pray that you would use me for your glory, honor, and praise. I'm, mere, I'm a mere servant, a mere man who is in need of a Savior. And so, Lord, I pray that you would use me. Oh, God, I pray today we pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ, and every glad heart said, amen. Amen. Uh, 
in our society today, we have seen many groups of people leap to action against injustice and fight for equal rights in many areas. I believe that these are necessary and even biblical things to speak out about in the midst of pain and heartache. But we must be honest in saying that there are many responses that we can have in the midst of adversity. Responses like wallowing, the woe is me mentality. How about this one? The lashing out in anger. Because nothing is going the way I want, I treat people how I want. Here's another one that, that some of us might, might feel uh, the, the jab to the gut is living in denial. Everything is just fine. But what I believe we find is in this text is the proper response to difficulty, and that is action. Joshua here is leading the Israelites to the land that God promised, but in leading them, there are some obstacles in the way. And with these obstacles, God is calling his people to take action in the midst of uncertainty. I believe this text renders three action items. One action item, and this is points if you want to put it that way. The first one is God is calling his people to obedience. Hmm. Let me catch you up on what's been happening so far. Moses uh, has a little, uh, has died a little over 30 years, uh, 30 days ago. And the Lord comes to the man Joshua and tells him that Moses is now gone. I, I want you to prepare the people to cross over the Jordan. The Lord also encourages Joshua that just as I was there with Moses, I'll be there with you. We see in chapter 2 the story of Rahab who hides the spies Joshua sends out to Jericho. And in the process, she finds favor because of what she did. Chapter 3 we, is where we begin to see the preparation and, and the start of the crossing of the Jordan. In chapter 4, where we find ourselves today, gives us more details on the crossing. Verse 1 of chapter 4, after the, Israel, as, after the entire nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord spoke to Joshua, choose 12 men from the people, one man for each tribe, and command them, take 12 stones from this place in the middle of the Jordan where the priests are standing, carry them uh, with you, and set them down at the place where you spend the night. Here we see the Lord giving Joshua clear commands on what he's, he is to do. And what I love about this is Joshua's response. Look at verse 4. It says, so Joshua summoned the 12 men he had selected from the Israelites, one man for each tribe. Did you see it? Joshua didn't leave any room for the people to say we didn't know what we were supposed to do. But beyond that, what, what I love about this is Joshua is leading by example. Remember, Joshua is the new kid on the block. Joshua has been observing Moses as, uh, uh, as, as he was in uh, the position of leadership, but Joshua himself have, has never been in the position of being one who leads a people. Yet, what he does is exactly what is commanded of him. Joshua displays obedience. Now you might say, what does that have to do with anything? 
And I would say to you in response, it has to do with everything. Your obedience or lack thereof exposes your view of God. One more time, one more time. Your obedience or lack thereof exposes your view of God. If we're honest with ourselves, many of our views of God contradict what God says about himself in Scripture. Our very own Dr. Lyons wrote a quote earlier this week that says, there are few people more dangerous than those who convince themselves that they are obeying God while violating biblical instruction. Throughout history, and even today, there are many who come into leadership and abandon the word of the Lord. But Joshua... (laughs) reaches forward to James chapter 1 and says, I will not just be a hearer of the commands only, but I will also be a doer. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to go ahead and give it out for free. We see the outcome of Joshua's obedience to God in verse 14. Verse 14 says, On the day that the Lord exalted Joshua, On that day, the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all of Israel, and they revered him throughout his life as they had revered Moses. Now, this is beautiful because chapter 3, verse 7, the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, Today I will, watch this, begin to exalt you in the sight of Israel. You missed it. Because of Joshua's obedience in the beginning of chapter 4, God completed what he promised Joshua in chapter 3. Let me lean in for a second. Let me just help you just a little bit. God has placed some covering around you to see how well you manage your chapter 4. I got to move, but... Israelites display the same obedience that Joshua practices. Being men and women who live out the truth, not create our own truth that gives us permission to do what we want. No, we follow the commands of our God, the one who is truth. Hmm. Joshua has an idea of what the journey is has looked like for God's people and in knowing how these people could be and how the obstacles look, he still decides to obey God. The first action God calls us to is obedience. Point two, the second action God calls us to is to stand firm. Calls us to stand firm. Look at verse 8. This is good. The Israelites did just as Joshua had commanded them. The 12 men took stones from the middle of the Jordan, one for each of the Israelite tribe, just as the Lord had told Joshua. They carried them to the camp and set them down there. Verse number nine, I love this verse. Joshua also set up 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing. The stones are still there today. Verse 10, the priests carrying the Ark continued standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything was completed that the Lord had commanded Joshua to tell the people in keeping with all that Moses had commanded Joshua. The people hurried across. This is closely tied to our first action, but I believe that this is just as necessary to hear in our world today. It's easy to stand firm when life is all right. When the sun is shining and the birds are chirping, But take a second and use your imagination. Notice at the end of verse 10, it says, the people hurried across. 
But what I want to observe is all parties in this text. Look at the priests. Can't you see it? The priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan, holding the ark of the Lord, watching the Israelites pass through, and they stand firm, though what's around them looks terrifying. See, you, you won't be honest, and so maybe I, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But you, you, you're not honest because you believe that you would be calm, cool, and collective during this time. But let me go ahead and be honest with you. I, I don't have to go far back to acknowledge that I would be troubled in the midst of the Jordan. I'm in my own Jordan right now. Let, let me see if I can, if I can make a plain. Uh, 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 Pascal and I were hanging out with uh, some friends uh, last week, and we began to share how we were looking to buy a for our first home. Uh, we were getting good information about uh, what to do, and, and, uh, and we heard that we were in a good place. Um, and, and in hearing that, you, you would think that uh, I would uh, have had some hope at the end. But um, as we were continuing to, to talk, I I spoke up and I said, hey, y'all, if I'm honest, I, I, don't, I don't see anything good happening for us in this season. And I had to remember and be reminded the truth of God's word and stand on that rather than being discouraged by what I see. Watch it. The priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan and their surrounding situation looks troubling, but what they stand on is the command of God and that no matter what I uh, see and what it looks like, God is with them in the Jordan. What in your life have you turned to in your Jordan River? Is it doubt? Is it despair? Here's for some of us, is it him or is it her? Is it this or is it that? Or do we stand firm on the word of God? Because the last time I read Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I got another one for you. Psalms 34, verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. You thought that was a good one. Here's another one. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. It says, is anything, this is one I got to say to myself, impossible for God. I got one more. Psalms 84, verse 10. Better a day in your courts than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than live in the tents of the wicked people. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord grants favor and honor and he does not withhold the good from those who live with integrity. Verse 12, happy is the person who trusts in you. Friends, I came by to let you know through your situation, looking dark, though your situation like Looks like the Jordan River. God is calling us to stand firm in him and him alone. I want to touch on this topic briefly. Scholars wrestle with verse 9. Some say that this second set of stone doesn't really exist, while others say Joshua put the stones inside the middle of the Jordan River as a personal reminder that God got them over. Whether you disagree or agree, 
that's up to you to debate. But one thing I will say at face value, it spoke to me. Because Joshua was not out of the Jordan when he placed the stones. He was in the Jordan when he placed the stone. Uh, come here while I shout myself happy. Here it is. Whether I'm staring at the Jordan or I'm in the Jordan or I've come out of the Jordan, there better be a, 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 a a, rem a reminder, but also there better be praise on your lip that God was with me through it all. You ought to celebrate wherever you are in life and know that God is with you. I got to quit. First action is obedience. Second action is is to stand firm. And the last action is my favorite. It's to testify. Point number three, God calls us, calls his people to testify. Verse number 19 says, the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and camped in Gilgal on the eastern limit of Jericho. Then Joshua set up in Gilgal the 12 stones they had taken from the Jordan. And he said to the Israelites in the future, when your children ask their father, what do these stones mean? You should tell your children, Israel crossed over the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the water of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. Skip down to verse 24. This is so that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord's hand is mighty and so that you may always fear the Lord your God. As important as the Jordan is, so also is the place the first steps they first step onto after coming out the place called Gilga. Gilga is not only a part of the land that God promised Israel, but it is significant because it's the place where the army regroups, where they gather themselves to head back to fight. And what's beautiful about this is every time they would win and win a battle and come back to Gilga, they would have seen these stones and then they would have been reminded as they gathered themselves together to get back out there in battle that the Lord brought us through the Red Sea and through the Jordan and surely he will bring us through anything we face. I love the way one preacher says, uh, this idea of Gilga, Gilga is uh, our, in our day, is the, is the age, or it, it, Gilga is, um, it is the church in our day and age. Gilga is the body of Christ. We come to church. We should be reminded and encouraged to know that the Lord is with us. Grandma and them used to have testimony service. They would stand flat foot and, and tell those around them that God has been good. You know, I never understood why they would stand and say, uh, I don't look like what I've been through. But when I think over my own personal life, it rings true. I don't look like what I've been through. And it's all because God was and is with me. I'm, I'm, I'm closing now. But you're wondering why name a sermon, a letter from my children. When you are the one who should be passing it down to them. Well, I was told 
that I would be preaching in the Undefeated series over a month ago. And I began looking at how God shows his might throughout Scripture. I landed in chapter 5, and like any good reader uh, would do, I looked what happened before. So I went back to read chapters 1 to 4. And after reading chapter 4, this title popped in my head, and don't you forget it. Man, I thought that that that, that was going to be a winner. I, I thought that that was going to be the sermon of the year for me. I, I kept reading chapter 4 over and over again, and a different title came, and, and, and man, uh, I thought it was even better than the last one. It was a letter to my unborn son. I mean, you talking about excited. I, I was indeed excited to preach and to have uh, something I can pass on to my child. You couldn't tell me anything. Then we found out that my wife's cervix had begun to open. The bag that held our baby boy was coming through the cervix. We prayed and we went to the doctors and they said that we had one option, which was to put a cerclage in, but it would be risky because his bag, we called our friends and family, and they prayed alongside us. Pascal went into surgery that day for the cerclage, and the surgery was successful. A week later, we would be right back in the same hospital, taking out the cerclage because the cervix wouldn't stop opening. The very next day after the cerclage was removed. My wife, who was carrying our son for 19 weeks, would have to give birth. Just last Saturday, we buried our son, Milo Douglas. March of 2019, we buried our twins, Adelina and Liani. In October of the same year, we would also miscarry Baby Dash. Four children. Not here, so how can they write a letter, you may say. Well, their letter is a lot different than any letter we could write to our own children. Because our letters continue on with our Jordan experiences for, of us crossing over. But their letter reads, Daddy, we made it. It reads that every situation and obstacle you face now is worth it in the end. Their letter reads that if you remain obedient, Daddy, there's a reward up here for you if you stand firm, Daddy. You put your, you will get a robe. You put on your robe and you'll tell the story of how you made it over. How, how, how. You made it over and you would then testify about your Jordan rivers. You would testify of how you looked at your Jordan River, how you were in your Jordan River and how you came out of your Jordan River. And as you testify, people who are around you will see that there is a God and that he's good. They would say, Daddy, testify. And so I hear my heavenly children say, Daddy, testify. Well, if you don't mind, I, I like to testify right now. Not, not just about my Jordan, but I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. What am I trying to say? Yes, make your memorial of what God brought you, what God brought you through, and what he brought you over, but don't you forget that there's a greater sign and a greater symbol that we can always look and remember, and that's the cross. The sign that you ought to look at should be the ones that God has brought you over. But there's also a bigger sign. It's that old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. It's a greater symbol. 
It's a greater reminder. And any time you look at the cross, you should just stand up and testify that one Friday they marched Jesus up a hill and On that hill, they put nails in his hand and nails in his feet and a spear in his side. I wish I had an organ now, but I I don't. I'm here by myself, but but I'm going to preach it like I feel. They put nails in his hand and nails in his feet, and and they put a crown of thorns on his head, and they pierced him in the side. They spit on him. They cursed him. They gave him sour wine, Uh, and, 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 and watch this. He even was praying for them as he was betrayed, and then watch this he dies he 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 lets his head drop in the locks of his shoulder and then they take him off the cross they the, the cross and they lay him in a borrowed tomb and it's quiet all night friday yeah uh-huh yeah it, 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 it's 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 quiet sunday morning i mean saturday morning when when the sun came up it was quiet quiet uh, uh, around lunchtime it was quiet when they started to serve dinner on saturday night But I'm so glad that the story doesn't end with just that. It doesn't end with a Friday. It doesn't end with a Saturday. Because early Sunday morning, he gets up with all power in his hand. He got up with all power in his hand because he has victory over sin, hell, and the grave. Because he has victory over sin, hell, and the grave. Because he has victory over sin, hell, and the grave. I can stand flat foot in obedience to God and test Testify that if I had, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I do not know where I would be. But I'm glad I can testify today that there is a God who will get me over the Jordan. But one day he's going to get me over more than just a Jordan. I'm going to enter into heaven with him and I'm going to I'm going to be with him and I'm going to sing praises and glory to God forever. Friends, make a memorial. Of how God brought you over. But don't you ever limit God to this world. Because one day he's going to come and wreck shop and he's going to make everything good again. So in the process of him doing what he's doing on earth. Take action. Be obedient to what he's saying to you. Stand firm on what God has said, not what you think or feel. And at the end of the day, testify and let the whole world know that there is a God and that he is for us. He's with us. He cares about us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. and We bless you that you have given us precious promises in Christ. That you have ultimately given us your son, Jesus Christ, who is the one who pays for our sin and shame. Thank you, Lord, that this is not it. That this world is not the end-all, be-all. But there is life after this. Because we know that there is life after this, We ought to be the spokespersons for you to tell the world, to testify that we have been saved and that we are making it over our Jordan because we have a God who is still with us, who is still for us. And so, Lord, I pray that we will live in this way and we will glorify your great name in everything. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ and every glad heart said, amen. Family, we are so excited that you joined us today. We pray that you are blessed by this service. And for those who want to trust Jesus as Lord and Savior, this next video is for you. Stay tuned. God bless. Peace.